Uh, first of all, let me say I would like to thank you guys for being with us during the weeks. Uh, you know, it's we get through it and uh, try to find a way to win the game. Last week we said get eight, seven, and one, and that's what we got a chance to do. With that, I'll take your questions. What kind of challenge is this? I mean, I know the Ravens are always well coached, and um, just their whole special teams unit, especially in a game that's probably going to be low scoring and few possessions where every play is kind of critical. Well, you know, I think I've known John for years, gone against him when he we were both in college. Uh, you know, know Jerry from the league. Uh, you know, you're going to get physicality. We're going to try to do the same thing. Uh, you hope to keep the field position battle in our favor, be it uh, kickoff coverage or punt coverage and all those scenarios. Uh, you know, we were very fortunate last time we had a – you know, a blocked field goal that kind of set us up and take us out of a bad situation there. So, you know, you just you got to look for those types of opportunities. You can't press the issue uh, because, again, it's kind of one of those deals where the physicality of the game is going to dictate a lot of the matchups uh, and things like that that you, you really can't control from a standpoint of schematics. You just got to hope that you, uh, you know, you play your gaps right and play your edges and, and pretty much like you do on offense and defense, just kind of keep battling. You saw the, the Dwayne Harris touchdown on Monday Night Football, but apparently it was part of a. You picked it up because it was part of a rule where you can, even if you fumble it after the other team tries to down it, you yep, get a big no game. Mm -hmm. How smart of a play is that? And I mean, how rare of a situation is that? Well, I think it's probably the longest one in the history that I've ever seen. I've had quite a few scenarios. A lot of people don't know the rule. Uh, and so we always kind of practice it, always talk about it. Obviously, in those scenarios, we show those types of plays. Uh, typical veteran move that Dwayne did. Uh, and, you know, the biggest thing, and uh, we were part of it in Arizona with Justin Bethel through the years, you got to gain possession. You know, you want to tip the ball back and keep it from going to the end zone and all that. But there's other factors involved. The box has to get down there, and they have to become the, the tackler because the gunner is focusing in on the tip back and stopping the ball from going in the end zone. And that's what makes the punt game in pro football. It's not like that in college. That's what makes our game so great with those types of scenarios because it's a thinking man's game on your feet. And I thought it was great, you know, and I'd love to teach off of it because run your antennas up on something like that. What is it about like Justin Tucker, what has made him so good and, and so consistent? Uh, you know, I think for the most part, he was a guy that when he came out of Texas a few years back, you know, we all looked at him. He was, you know, there was a lot of kickers coming out uh, consistently down there that were backup, perennial backups, and maybe shared reps or something as a senior. But I think his work ethic is probably pretty good. I don't really know Justin that well because I never gave him a workout or anything back in those days. But I'm, I'm sure he has tremendous work ethic. Uh, he's got a, you know, for a guy that's not very big, he's got an extremely strong leg. Uh, puts the ball on consistently on his foot to probably the same spot and stuff like that. So I just think probably the work ethic and uh, and confidence. You know, you the more you get the opportunity to make long kicks and you make some of them, you gain confidence. So the same thing with Greg Zerline a few years back when we were in LA, you know, going against the Rams a bunch. What happened on that uh, block punt last week, and how frustrating is it that? It's happening this late in the year. Well, it's it, it, it's frustrating from the standpoint it happened, period. Doesn't matter what time of the year. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is the awareness of the situation of the game. Uh, you know, we had given up the punt return game one, uh, and we knew that situation didn't need to come back and haunt us. But in that situation, we've got to all have our antennas up in terms of, hey, I've got to do this. I can't chase looks. I can't chase something that's going to make me get out of my technique. And a lot of times that's what happens. You might see something on film that you think a guy's going to do something a certain way, but in the heat of the moment, he might go and react a different way. So you kind of got to just put it in a concept, uh, in concepts of, you know, I've got to do my job vertically, and then I've got to do my job exploding out in terms of the protection part of it. But, uh, you know, never want to happen, but unfortunately, when it, ha when it did happen, my thought was immediately to get it corrected on the sideline from what we saw in the pitchers because we were in a situation where the same play was going to happen again from the standpoint of we were going to go out there and play hands again, and we might potentially have to punt the football again. So you don't think about it in, 
in a negative, is, like I told the players on the first slide for Wednesday. Sideline conversations are not for blame. We're not blaming. We're trying to correct, trying to move on because of the situation of the game is going to repeat itself if we don't. And they accepted that. And then what about the, the fake early in the game? Uh, in, in hindsight, I probably should have kept a bigger personnel out there on the inside. I had always played with that. So I'll look at myself in that right off the bat and say it would have been better to have had a bigger body on the inside on the guard. But when we played, when I called that play and sent it in, it's all eyes on what's going on. And teams will give it away. The keys, the pre-snap keys, all those things were there. We just did not play very smart on that play. And then at the end of the day, we knew it was going to be something like that in that game, kind of like what we talked about with the Ravens. Uh, and so, you know, but you got to play this game physically and you got to react quickly. It's not a game for reading and, and guessing. It's a game for reactions and being physical. And we needed to be on all accounts that way. But having a bigger body on the inside probably would have helped stop it a little bit better. Don't know if it would have gotten the first down or not. But, uh, you know, everybody has the play, so you got to go in knowing it. Baltimore actually ran it earlier in the year on the minus six or seven yard line. Yeah, got an offsides penalty, I think, on the play. How does it help you to have um, a head coach that's, that's worked your job before? Well, shoot. The good thing about having Greg is he understands the mechanics of kicking and punting as well as he does. And that's what, you know, when I got started in special teams years ago uh, by – uh, you know, Coach Bryant at Alabama, we were always good in special teams. And uh, as a young coach, I started there with him and then proceeded on in college. Not a lot of guys know about coaching kickers and punters and the nuances of what their mindset is. Greg understands those things. And he's, uh, you know, he's been good in that respect. Everything about since we changed has been positive for me and uh, then the players. Uh, you know, because now we can get through practice without any distractions and with a, without any kind of situation where, you know, a guy might come off the field not knowing what's going on. Greg's been great about that. And, hey, you know, that's what happened. That's the key in Baltimore, right, Jerry and John together. So uh, I think it's great when the head coach knows something about special teams. You know, so I appreciate Greg from that standpoint. He's been allowed – he's allowed me to be able to do my job. Comes one more. When it comes to a young kicker like Greg, you know we've seen him do pretty well with field goals. He struggled a little bit with extra points. Is, is there a mindset there coming from college where it's shorter to the NFL? Even though it's you know like a 33-yard field goal, is the mindset different because it's still an extra point? Uh, gosh, you'd hope they'd see this, those crossbars are further away, right? I think, and it was a great article today. I only actually saw it because a former kicker sent it to me uh, in the USA Today about you know, the struggles of the extra point. It's, it's a worthy read. Uh, you know, I think the extra point deal, from what I've gathered uh, in my research and been in this league since they changed it, it's all about the process. Uh, you know, uh, we did something last week that Greg knows he can't do on that. And, um, you know, that aided in it being wide right because it hits the goalpost. So you can't deviate from your process. It's a field goal. It's not an extra point anymore. It's 33 yards. Uh, where you spot it is your choice. That's the only difference in a field goal. The offense would have to put it on the left hash if you wanted it on the left hash or the right hash. Extra point, you get the choice. But you can't let uh, anything get you out of the process. What you practice and how you practice those things, whatever the situation is, is what you got to rely on. You know, same thing on offense and defense. It's, it goes back down to, you know, repetition. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can continue to uh, grow. It was good to see him come back and hit the, the, extra, uh, the field goals after that. Because, again, I've said it before, a guy that's going to make it in this league is a kicker that's going to be able to bounce back and not miss two in a row. And that's what you got to understand with those guys. That's what they've got to understand about themselves is they cannot miss two in a row. And if they do, they better find a damn way to make the third one, you know, because people are going to really look at them that way. You know, but it's, it's interesting because it doesn't matter about age or experience. I mean, the guys that were in that article were veterans. Then Zane was quoted in the article. And uh, so it's, it's kind of like a, 
it's, it's like they're all in that brotherhood of somebody's pushing one, somebody's hitting off the goal post, you know, those types of things. But give yourself a chance by being in the process and going through, you know, whether it's the delayed situation and stuff like that. You know, it's kind of how we practice it as well.